Hi everyone, my name is Shantae and I'm an Education AmeriCorps member here at the Georgia Sea Turtle Center. For the third and final segment of our Georgia Sea Turtles series, we're going to talk about the leatherback sea turtle today. Leatherbacks are the largest species of sea turtle in the world. They weigh up to 2,000 pounds and they can be anywhere from 6 to 8 feet in length. In addition to that, their primary nesting grounds are going to be in the warm beaches of the Caribbean and South Florida. Now, leatherbacks are a very special species of sea turtle. They are the only species that have a soft shell. So unlike having a bony hard shell, they have a shell that is made out of rubber-like thick material, which is used to be a bit flexible and bendy. Whenever they're doing their deep dives, they need to have this flexible shell so that it does not crack under pressure. They can dive up to 4,000 feet below sea level. Sea turtles are cold-blooded animals or ectothermic, meaning that they require their environment to help regulate their body temperature. Leatherback sea turtles have adapted a way to regulate their body temperature under the cold depths of the ocean. This adaptation is called countercurrent exchange. So what it is is that the veins and arteries of the sea turtle are so close together that they're almost touching. With this close proximity, heat exchange can go from the arteries to the veins so that warm blood is continuously circulating from the sea turtle's heart and it can keep warm and survive in its environment. So we're going to go ahead and switch gears and talk about some more features of these sea turtles. The leatherback skull is very large. So at the front of their skull, towards their jaw, they're going to have these little grooves and those are called cusps. So they act like the fork of the leatherback sea turtle. And what they use this for is to grasp onto their food and to be able to swallow it whole. The leatherbacks diet primarily consists of jellyfish. And jellyfish can be pretty slippery, so they need those cusps to be able to swallow the jellyfish. They also have these projections in their throats and their mouths called esophageal papillae. These projections are made out of keratin, which is the same material as our hair and fingernails. So whenever they latch on and be able to swallow, the esophageal papillae will be able to move the food down from their mouths to their throats. These esophageal papillae also serve another purpose. Whenever a leather bag feeds out in the ocean, you're going to take in a bunch of salt water. The salt water can leave the turtle not only dehydrated, but feeling ill. So these esophageal papillae can hold on to their food as they spit out that seawater so that they can remove all of that excess salt and still contain their food. But one of the major threats that go against leatherback sea turtles is going to be marine debris, specifically plastics. So if there is a plastic bag that flew out into the ocean. It would look just like a jellyfish. So the leather bag won't know the difference between their food or the plastic bag. So once they ingest that plastic bag, it would get all entangled in the papillae and it can either lead to choking or for the sea turtle to become blocked or other internal damage. But there are some ways that we can help these guys out. Recycling and reusing plastics is a good way to start. Also, if you see any trash along the beaches or even in your own home, just kind of like dispose of those in the proper bins. Also, if you see a sick or injured sea turtle, you can call our Georgia State Hotline, which is 1-800-2-SAVE-ME, or your local wildlife authorities wherever you are in the world. Thank you all so much for watching our Georgia Sea Turtle series. If you like what you see, come back and visit our Facebook page to check out more of Food School's activities and what we have up in the future, hosted by the Georgia Sea Turtle Center. Thank you so much and have a great day.